Welcome everybody to the fourth annual Ken's Wine Guide Big Red Wine Tasting. We're going to be doing this tasting blind on Friday night and tonight I am going to go over all 15 entries from this one over here to this one over here and we are going to talk a little bit about them like you would in a post parade for a big horse race and there's going to be a lot of horse racing analogies in this one. So let's first look at the big picture. The big, the big picture is that all these are 2007 Cabernets with the exception of two. We have one 2006 entry and one 2004 entry, but keep in mind all these are new releases from these respective wineries. Each and every one of these wines could win and the big prize is to be deemed the Christmas, ultimate Christmas wine gift. So. Let's start with a post parade of wines. And our first entry is the Paul Hobbs 2007 Napa Cabernet. This wine, it's a little brother ran away with our midterm uh, uh, race in the fact that the Cross Barn 2007 won our mid-tier Cabernet tasting about uh, two or three weeks ago. So this wine already has four scores in the low 90s and could be our winning wine. The next one is the Pina. The D Amato Vineyard and uh, Adamo probably is the proper pronunciation. This is from Napa. This wine, uh, I usually like its big brother, the Buckeye, which I've already reviewed the 2007. This 2006 um, also got a couple of good scores. Got a really good number from Wine Spectator. We'll have to see how this entry uh, does in the tasting on Friday night. Our third entry is from uh, a renowned sparkling producer, Jay Davies. This is... Um, uh, they're the Schramsberg folks, and this is their Cabernet, and uh, mostly Cabernet, 84% Cab. This is from the Diamond Mountain District, so we'll have to see how uh, Diamond Mountain Fruit does on uh, Friday night. This has got a 94 from Parker already. This entry, number four, will not sneak up on anybody. This is the 2007 Insignia. This is a big boy wine each and every year. It's a hard charger. I fully expect this to go do well. It already has scores ranging from... 94 to potentially 100 points from Parker. Uh, he did a barrel tasting. He hasn't put his final number on that one yet. We'll have to see how that comes out. <laughs> the fifth wine consistently does well with me. This is the Lale um, J. Daniel Cuvée. I love this wine in past vintages. Uh, it's got two big early numbers from Tanzer and Parker, and, um, and I'm hoping that it uh, does perform well again on Friday. Our sixth entry is kind of a new, a relative newcomer to us. This is the D.R. Stevens Moose Valley Vineyard. Um, we really liked this wine last year, and I'm really looking forward to the 2007. It's got two big early numbers as well. Actually, three uh, early numbers in the low 90s. Its little sister called the D.R. 2 did very well with us last week. So um, it pulls some of the grapes from the same vin vineyard. So uh, looking forward to uh, seeing how that one performs as well. Might be a surpriser for some of the grapes when we unveil them. This one, also a newcomer to us. The Von Strasser Spalding Vineyard. Uh, Von Strasser consistently does well with the spectator, or with the wine and spirits folks. Um, Connoisseur's Guide gave this wine a good number, so we'll have to see um, how this performs. This is a new one for us as well. Then we go to another um, new entry, and this is a relatively new wine. This is called uh, Altus 2007. This is from the folks that make Maris. Maris has uh, done very, very well with us. Uh, this has got a recently got a, uh, an insider uh, good number out of Spectator. Should do well on Friday as well. Dariush. Dariush, always a fine wine. A lot of our readers really like this one. Uh, no numbers on this one yet, so we're going to call this a maiden in the race, but we know based on pedigree, this could be one of the finalists and could be one of our big winners. Speaking of pedigree, uh, the next one up is the uh, Cherry Block from Sebastiani. No numbers again on this, but again, strong pedigree and a long storied history could be a finalist as we come in. Next, we come to one of our favorites in the race, the uh, Chapel at Pritchard Hill. It's our 11th entry. This wine already has three scores, 96, 96, and 97. Pretty impressive. We'll have to see how it holds up in our tasting, but could be, could be our winner for sure. Maryvale Profile takes the 12th uh, entry spot in. Uh, I went to a high-end tasting last year, the 2006, finished in first or second place, depending on who you were talking to. Very impressive wine, now using 2007 uh, grapes, should, should do well. This is 60% cab, 
Merlot, Cab Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec, the whole enchilada in terms of Bordeaux grapes. Looking forward to seeing how that performs. Now, our first older entry is from um, a classic uh, kind of cult wine, the Schaefer Hillside Select 2006. Again, this is, um, this is um, a uh, classic wine from Napa Valley. This is the current vintage. Uh, Parker gave this a 97. Two other 90-point scores could be our, our, our uh, could be our winner as well. And then our favorite, this entry here, you can't, uh, you, you can't probably even get a bottle of this. One of our panelists donated this to the tasting. This is 100 points from Robert Parker. This is the Scarecrow. Uh, also got 90, uh, 97 points from Spectator and 96 from Tanzer. This horse, this, this, this wine should be the horse running away the way that Secretariat did in the Belmont, but we'll have to see if it gets upset on Friday night, but could very well be the winner. And our last wine is from one of uh, my favorite producers, Tom Eddy. He makes this 2004 Meteor Cab. We were blown away by Tom's uh, Crane Estate, um, uh, Dr. Crane um, 2004 this spring, so we'll just have to see. This is the Meteor the Meteor Vineyard uh, 2000. So now that we've uh, presented all the different options for you, what, what are we going to do? We're going to have our tasting on Friday night. The order that the wines were presented in here today are not the order that they're going to be presented in uh, to the tasting panel on Friday night. They're going to be bagged and they're going to be um, uh, put in a random random order. And we also would like to think hear from you. We're going to post this video on, uh, on our website and and just below it, if you're not a fan of uh, Ken's Wine Guide on Facebook, you can become a fan and, and put your comments in there. We'd like to hear from you, from all these wines that we presented to you, which wine do you think is going to win? Uh, we'd love to hear what people predict they're going to be the winners. So you've seen them all in the post parade here. And on Saturday or Sunday, when we finally tally everything up, we're going to uh, do another short video and we're going to present all the winners. Or we're going to present the top five wines in a short little video that we'll also put up this weekend. So we're certainly looking forward to this tasting on Friday night. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And we look forward to sharing with you the winners and who, which wine will ultimately be the ultimate wine Christmas gift. Thanks. Cheers.